The Swiss National Bank stole the headlines yesterday with a surprise interest rate cut. The Bank of England stayed pat, but the BOE hawks dropped their rate hike vows, and the dollar, on the other hand, jumped on the back of strong economic data from the US that actually raised questions about the Fed's well, plans to cut its interest rates despite data telling another story. So yes, it's all getting a bit confusing, so we will talk about all that at today's episode. So welcome, this is Swiss Code's Daily Market Talk. So the second big surprise of this week came from the Swiss National Bank. The Swiss cut the interest rates by 25 basis points to 1.5% yesterday. In a surprise move, leapfrogged the Fed and the European Central Bank and became the first major central bank to cut its interest rates. So we can say that the Swiss actually officially kicked off the private party. So the Swiss 10-year yield fell to 65 basis points and franc lost against the US dollar and the euro. After the decision yesterday, the dollar franc broke above the 2022 to 2024 downtrending channel and the euro Swiss spiked above a Fibonacci retracement, though the franc remains well above or well stronger than the pre-pandemic levels, both against the greenback and the single currency and has of further room to weaken. So the Swiss National Bank is expected to lower its rates two more times this year and the latter should lead to a gradual depreciation in the Swiss franc, help the Swiss exporters to see the light at the end of the tunnel and also support the stock valuations as well. Now UBS says that a 1% depreciation in the Swiss franc would lead to around 0.9% rise in the Swiss stock. So no wonder the SMI, which has remained well behind as US and European peers this year, well, that have obviously been running on well, records since the start of this year, jumped 0.73% at year yesterday's trading session. Now, if the Swiss could kick off the pivot party this quickly, it is certainly because inflation in Switzerland has been easier to fight for the Swiss National Bank thanks to the traditionally strong Swiss franc. So you just had to well, leave the Swiss franc strengthen and well, a good part of the well, job of easing inflation in Switzerland was done. So the Swiss inflation fell to 1.2% in February on a yearly basis. And of course, as this is the case, elsewhere what the data says and how people feel the price pressure industry is not the same at all but the fact that the official data is so low right now in Switzerland in terms of inflation well comes as a relief for the Swiss and beyond because if the Swiss kicked off the dance well that means that the others will certainly join soon as well. Now, how soon? Well, if all goes well and if inflation remains under control, well, the Fed and the European Central Bank are also expected to cut their rates in June. And yesterday, two Bank of England hawks dropped their rate hike vote. So no one voted to hike the rates in Britain yesterday. Eight MPC members voted to stay pat and one voted to cut. So the cut votes are yet to rise, obviously, but... The Bank of England also gives signs of well, turning its back slowly to policy tightening. How dovish, how nice. So, cable slipped below the 50-day moving average yesterday and is testing the 100-day moving average to the downside. This morning at the time I'm talking here, the Japanese yen remained offered despite data showing that inflation in Japan rose to a three-month peak. I mean... At this point in time, there is really nothing that the data could do to save the Japanese yen, apparently. And the euro dollar also took a severe hit at yesterday's trading session and sank to the 200-day moving average. Now, note that the sell-off was amplified by a surprisingly strong set of economic data released in the US yesterday. And well, data got some Federal Reserve those to well, scratch their heads about the Fed's determination to cut its interest rates sometime 
this year because the Fed actually keeps saying that they will cut the interest rates, but the data keeps telling that they should not cut the rate so soon. So there is a real confusion between what the Fed intends to do and what the data will allow the Federal Reserve to do. So for now, the Fed does have a stronger hand than the ECB does because the ECB chief, Kristen Lagarde, said this week that they are not committed to rate cuts beyond June. But again, the confusion reigns because the Fed, whose underlying economy doesn't necessarily need a rate cut right away, sounds quite dovish, and the European Central Bank, whose underlying European economies need maybe a rate cut more than the US does, remains relatively hawkish. So as I was saying earlier in this episode, the US data was strong again yesterday, while the PMI data in the Eurozone show that well, the two big European economies, Germany and French, well, they all had their manufacturing continue to contract in March. So the data tells one story and the policymakers tell another story and the prices move well quite unpredictably these days and it's difficult to understand what's going on. But that's not the case in the stock markets happily because there everything is fine. The European stocks traded at a fresh all-time high yesterday. The S&P 500 extended gains to a fresh record as well. This time, well, because the strong economic data from the US combined to the dovish Fed and dovish Fed expectations fueled optimism about soft landing. Nasdaq 100 also renewed record as micron technology jumps 14% at yesterday's trading session, beating the second quarter expectations on strong AI demand. Nike gained timidly after beating expectations on surprise China strength. And while well, FedEx also rose yesterday on an earnings beat and a 5 billion US dollar buyback program that the company announced. Now, Apple, however, tanked 4% as well, regulators on both sides of the Atlantic Ocean went after the technology giant and its monopolistic behavior. So the company, Apple, looks like it's actually carrying the misery of the world on its shoulders these days. I mean, it missed the AI rally. It's sued by regulators around the world regarding its well, business model, and China is not playing along. So, ouch. We also have a death cross formation on the daily chart where the 50-day moving average crossed below the 200 moving average, which is, mind you, a technical formation which actually gets some traders out there to position short on the stock. So Apple is not doing fine, but, you know, the other stocks are not giving signs of exhaustion for this rally. So the rally is on. And Reddit made a strong debut on New York Stock Exchange as well yesterday because the shares opened 38% higher, rose as much as 60% and settled at plus 48% at the end of the first day of trading. And as I was saying yesterday, the weather conditions were excellent for a first fly, but trading Reddit is suitable for those who love meme stocks, so I wouldn't necessarily go there for a long-term position in a portfolio. Last but not least, while well, Bitcoin managed to hold ground near the $60,000 level this week, gold retreated after hitting a fresh all-time high posterior to the Fed decision, while US crude failed to extend gains above the $83.70 per barrel level and is back below the $81 per barrel level this morning on. Weaker US gasoline demand and also on hope of a ceasefire in Gaza, although Although note that the Israeli government said that they will do what they will do and they will ultimately invade Rafah no matter what the US says. So I believe that we will see decent buying into and below the $80 per barrel level in the US crude, both on the back of geopolitical tensions and the dovish central bank expectations. And I expect that the actual positive trend in the US crude could actually extend toward the $85 per barrel level. So voila, this is all for this week. I'm Ipek Özkardeşke and thank you for joining me and thank you for all your beautiful and supportive comments. I hope this episode of Market Talk has been helpful and it has been insightful to you. So please do not hesitate to leave your comments, your reactions and your questions below as usual. Follow us on Instagram, on X and on LinkedIn for regular 
market updates. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for daily market comments and please do not forget to hit the like button on these videos to let us know that you enjoy them. So I will meet you again next week and until then, good day trading and have a lovely weekend. Thank you.